guys? I am Cody from Auto Mafia Racing, and today we have our EcoBoost Mustang. And what's in this box here? All right. So what I am holding here is the BNR 600. This by far is going to be the best, highest flowing drop-in turbo that you can get. Now, BNR is also going to offer a 525, which is going to be a direct competitor of the current king of drop-ins, the NX2. It's going to go right into your factory downpipe, your factory charge piping, or any of the uh, the upgraded charge piping you may have that fits the factory turbo. It's all going to go right in. The only thing that you need to get for this to make it work is a an adapter coupler that goes into the mouth of this turbo in your factory airbox or your aftermarket cold air intake system. The only other modifications you may need to do is a little bit of grinding on the block. We plan on making a spacer for this so you do not have to grind the block, but for now we're going to show you how to do that. It's really easy to do it at home. You can do it. We're going to show you that process here shortly. Okay guys, the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery. You can either use a 10 millimeter here to disconnect the entire terminal. Um, I do have some extra stuff wired to it, so I'm just going to connect the line. Same thing, 10 millimeter, disconnect the negative terminal. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the cover. It's eight millimeter bolts and 10 millimeter nuts. You guys don't have to do this. I do it just to get stuff out of the way. Okay guys, as you can see, the heat shield's already been removed. Um, we do that just so you can see better. Also, the downpipe has been removed. You can check one of our other videos, our AMR downpipe installation video to see how to remove that. The next thing we're gonna do is remove our air intake and intercooler pipes. Once those are off, you can just get them out of your way. The next thing we're gonna do is start removing our oil and coolant lines. That's a 10 millimeter, just to separate the lines so they're easier to take off. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the eight millimeter from the center of the two coolant lines. Okay, now that that eight millimeter bolt is out, we're going to pull the hard line straight back towards the strut tower. Um, there's just an O-ring seal in there. It might be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, the top one comes out first. As you can see, this car has already been drained of all its coolant. Um, if your car still has coolant in it, expect coolant to come out of these lines when you pull them. You can see the O-ring right there and on the top. Now remember this orientation. If you go to put the stock lines back on, you could see the one side is longer than the other. The blue O-ring goes in the bottom. The black O-ring goes in top. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is remove the squeeze clamp from this coolant line. And then you can just pull it off. The next thing we're going to use is an H10 Allen. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're going to use an H10 Allen to crack that bolt loose. Next thing we're going to do is take off the oil feed line using an 8mm. And again, this is just an O-ring seal in here. So you just got to pull up on it. Using a 17 millimeter, we're going to take the oil feed line off of the block. Okay guys, when you take the oil feed line off, make sure that both of the copper crush washers come with it. Sometimes they like to stick on the block. You got to make sure that's clean of any and all debris and make sure that the copper crush washers come off with the feed line. Okay guys, this is a pain in the ass. There is an eight millimeter bolt holding the drain line to the bottom of the turbo if you put your hand under here you can feel it it's an eight millimeter that faces up like this it's definitely a pain in the ass but you've got to take it out so let's get started Okay guys, as you can see in the mirror right here, that is the 
location of the eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolt in the mirror. That's on the bottom of the turbo. Just so you can get a better idea of where it is. Okay guys, now that all of the coolant and oil lines are removed from the stock turbo, you can use a 13 millimeter and unbolt your turbo. So check this out. Stock turbo, b &R 600. Look at that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is completely remove the drain line from the block. It's two eight millimeters. Okay guys, as you can see, the spot that I marked with the red paint marker is what we're gonna have to grind. Before we start grinding that, you wanna make sure you cover any and all holes. So cover these holes up and then we're gonna start grinding. Okay, it looks like we have good clearance. We're flush against the head. So we're gonna bolt this thing up. We're going to remove the factory turbo gasket because the BNR does come with another gasket. Okay guys, as per BNR instructions, we're gonna be installing these M6 studs down to where the drain bolts go into the block. Before we do that, I'm just gonna clean all the surfaces with brake clean, make sure we have a nice good seal. The next step of our install process is going to be attaching our oil drain line to the bottom of the turbo using the gasket and the M6 16 millimeter bolts. Uh, I did notice it's, that there's some assembly lube down here, so I'm just gonna grab some brake clean and a rag and clean that all off so we get a good seal. Okay, so a couple things here. This is the factory oil drain line here. We're going to reuse this O-ring on the new BNR turbo drain line, and also keep an eye on this notch. This notch matters on how it's installed. The next step is to attach the bottom of the drain line over the studs on the block. So we'll see if we can sneak that on there. Yep, that's too Keep wiggling it. Okay guys, these two 10 millimeter nuts that go on the bottom of the oil drain are a real pain in the ass. Um, anybody that's ever worked on an EcoBoost knows how hard it is to actually get the bottom drain line onto the bottom of the turbo um, once the turbo is actually on the car. Um, so this is a pain in the ass, but it's not as hard as trying to get that feed line into the bottom of the turbo once the turbo is on the car. I found out the front, the front 10 millimeter nut you can get to with an open end or a swivel and a couple of extensions. This back one you can get to from the bottom right behind the AC compressor. So. BNR recommends you torque these down to eight foot pounds, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, guys, the next thing we're gonna do is put our 13 millimeter nuts back on our studs to hold on our turbo. As per BNR, you're going to torque these down to 35 foot pounds, but it wants them done in a cross or star sequence 
and in a two-step sequence. So what I'm going to do is, in order to seat the gasket properly, I'm going to go in a cross pattern to 20 foot-pounds and then the 35. As you can see, we're at 20 foot-pounds for our first sequence. All right, now we're up to 35 foot pounds, same thing. Okay guys, the next step in the BNR instructions, it shows a spacer and another M6 bolt. For those of you that are gonna be reusing the heat shield, what you're going to do is the bottom mount for the heat shield you're going to put the spacer on first, then the heat shield, and then the bolt's gonna go through it. Um, for this application, we're not gonna be using the heat shield, so we're going to skip this step. But again, so you know, there's a spacer, heat shield, and then that's the bottom mount for the heat shield on the turbo. Okay guys, the next step in the BNR instructions, and they say you learn something new every day. I never knew this, but BNR wants you to heat all of the copper crush washers to anneal them so that they get a better seal. What it does is it softens the metal and allows the um, copper crush washer to seal better. So we're going to do that as per their instructions. It says to heat it up with a torch until they start to discolor and then allow them to cool slowly. Okay, so now we're gonna let these cool and move on to the next step. Okay guys, there's a little bit of confusion when it comes to the copper crush washers. As you can see, there are about eight of them that are small and thin. A couple of them have a bigger diameter. As you can see on the banjo bolts, on the kit supply banjo bolts, one of them is thicker. So you wanna make sure it fits over nice and snug. And there's not a lot of play. You can tell if you put it on the wrong one because it moves around. Also, the real thick crush washers are going to go on the OEM banjo bolt for the water supply line. So just make sure you got everything in the, in the proper order and uh, let's get started putting the lines on. As you can see, I removed the thermal sleeve that's gonna go on here. We're going to be reusing this OEM rubber hose. So I'm gonna grab some pliers to squeeze a squeeze clamp, pull that off and put that on our new water supply line. Okay guys, you are gonna have to bend this line a little bit in order to get it to fit right. So for right now, I'm just gonna bend this one forward a little bit. You don't wanna bend it too much and kink the line. All right, now that we have this kind of in here, we can start looking at where it's gonna go into the block. You can tell it's not exactly where it needs to go, so it's gonna to need to be bent a little more. We're gonna go ahead and do that to line it up. And you can also tell that we took off the top line. We just found it easier just to get to this bottom line. The instructions say to put the top water line in first. I went ahead and did the bottom and took the top line out because it was just in the way. It's already hard to do this as it is without the top line being in the way. And so once we have this actually lined up with the block, I'm gonna put the top water line back in because we know that actually fits. All right, there we go. Now I have the banjo bolt started on the block. It didn't take much bending at all. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the top water line back in and put it back on the turbo here. 
Okay guys, what I should have just did from the beginning, instead of trying to work around it or possibly bending the actuator rod, was just take the actuator off. It's a C-clip that holds it to the flapper and two 10 millimeter nuts. Now that that's out of the way. Now we can torque down these bolts. Now that we have that actuator out of the way, it's gonna be really easy to tighten both of these water banjo bolts down to 27 foot pounds, and as well as the one on the block. Okay, 27 foot pounds, we're gonna to torque down these banjo bolts. Okay, we're gonna reuse the top clamp housing. Okay, so there are our coolant lines, top and bottom. This is back in, we're good to go. Now it's time to do our feed oil line. Simple to do guys, it just needs to be worked behind the turbo, just like that. You're gonna put one, your new banjo bolt here and your original banjo bolt right here. Now we're gonna leave that loose until we get the top one in. Okay guys, we're gonna tighten this top banjo to 18 foot pounds. All right, nut on the block, same thing, 18 foot pounds. Okay guys, that is everything BNR sends. We just need to install our M10 studs into the back of the turbine housing here. And you will need to source a three and a half inch transition coupler down to your factory intake system or aftermarket intake system. We've already talked about that, just wanna re reiterate that. The rest of this all plugs in just like factory. We're gonna go ahead and show you that. Tommy, what else do we need to do? Okay, in the instructions, it says you can hook up the factory boost controller and blow off valve, all that stuff we no longer have on this car. We're running an aftermarket blow off valve and a manual boost controller. So we just need to figure out our vacuum lines. But if you guys still have all of the factory OEM stuff, um, it'll, hook up, it'll hook right up to your actuator, to your turbo, and all of that's on your blow off valve pipe. Now that our studs are in the back of the turbo housing, we can put our downpipe back on. And also for you guys that are still running the stock setup, it's the electronic boost control, along with all of the vacuum lines that go to your turbo your actuator, and your blow-off valve. We are running an aftermarket blow-off valve so we don't have any of that stuff. Um, just check the Ford installation instructions on how to put your factory stuff back on. All right, guys, that is how you install the BNR 600 and 525. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and go ahead and contact your favorite tuner. Uh -huh.